Hey, this is Spencer with Pixlays Woodworking. I just want to show you a quick little project that I'm working on. Um, I've got this uh, piece of elm burl that I just turned on the lathe. Um, I was looking at it and wanted to make a little box out of it. There's a ton of holes and stuff I would like to fill with resin. Um, and it's fairly cleaned up now. So I have, I was looking through all my various recycled plastic containers to see what to use and this is what I came up with that is a tight fit let's see I think that will work I might need to narrow it down or actually I think I'll just take it out the other way let's see yeah oh yeah because it looks like it kind of narrows down at the base so I'll flip it in and see if it will go this way. Oh, perfect. So the tricky part will be to get the resin down in there. So I think what I'll have to do is fill up the bottom with resin and then stick this down in there and try to fill the sides with resin too. That's going to be tricky, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that, but I will mix some resin up together. I think I'm going to go with um, emerald green. I think that would look good with this burl. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with green. All right, I will see you at the next step. All right, so I got my blank here, and it only fits in here. It fits perfectly. It's like a piston fit, almost. Um, I got this all nice and clean on the inside. This is actually my son's uh, vitamins jar. And I was looking at it, I was like, oh yeah, that would, that could work for doing, mixing some resin in there. Um, so, I kind of have to guess how many grams of resin I'm going to use. I'm going to be using the um, Alumalite Clear Slow. Uh, this I'm going to use 75 grams of part A and 75 grams of part B. It's a one to one uh, mixture uh, by weight. I'm going to go ahead and do 75. All right. Oh, just about. 75. I'm not sure this is going to be enough resin, but I will go ahead and try it. We'll see what happens. Ooh, that's very close. Oh, a little bit too much. 155. Yeah, there's about four more than I wanted to. I'm going to add just a tiny bit. There we go. That looks about right. All right, I am thinking this is either going to be, this might be too much, but I will try it anyways. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I want to overfill it a little bit because I got to squeeze the resin up and around the sides to fill the voids. So it's going to be pretty messy. So I'm going to ha have to put this inside of another container because it's going to overflow. I'm sure I got another container in here somewhere. Here's what I'm going to use is the overfill container, the yogurt container. All right, so I need to mix this resin. And I need to find a stick. All right, I'm going to mix this for one minute, then I'll get back with you. You want to make sure that you get the sides of the container. You want to mix it evenly and thoroughly. You want to mix it for a whole minute and you want to avoid 
mixing it too quickly, but you want to be nice and even. Make sure that everything is well combined. It for about one minute. And there's quite a few bubbles in there. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the pressure pot and try to pop some of those bubbles before I go ahead and mix it in. Because a lot of those bubbles are going to get trapped being at the bottom of this uh, container. And I'm worried that the pressure in the tank might not pop. It. So we'll see. It might do just fine. This is a, a Harbor Freight paint tank that was modified to a pressure tank for doing resin casting. There's a YouTube video um, by uh, Zach Higgins, I think, that shows how to convert this. the 42 side. Hopefully my air compressor doesn't kick on. And then I'm just going to let the pressure out. And wait for the pressure to go all the way down before undoing and screwing the clamps. And that did knock down quite a few of the bubbles. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it did take out some, not all of them, but some. So let's see, I need diamond green. That's what I'm gonna use today. So this is what I'm going to use today, Diamond Emerald Green by uh, Black Diamond Pigments. This is my go-to for pigments. Get this opened up. And I'm going to use quite a bit, more than you would typically use, because I don't want it to be transparent. I want it to be pretty well. Pretty opaque. Let's just let's see. This is about I think about five grams. Oh no, this is uh, milliliters. Five milliliters worth of pigment. I'm gonna mix this up. Alright, so you can see it's a nice cool looking green. Yeah, I definitely mixed way more resin than I needed to. But that's okay because it's going to be hard to get it in all the voids. It's going to be quite tricky. Alright, got my yogurt container. I'm going to go ahead and use some urethane mold release. Um, you can buy this on Amazon. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below for this product. This will help get the resin mold out. However, I am pretty sure that it's not going to come out of here that easily. Um, this will be my first time using a hard container like this. So we'll see if we can get it out of there. More than likely, I'll need to cut it open, but we'll see. All right, so I gotta pour this resin in here. I'm gonna pour 
most of it, but I need to keep a little bit for the top. And then I gotta take this blank and I really gotta squeeze it in there until it comes out the sides. Oh yeah, I definitely used way more resin than I needed to. But I've got an idea. <clears throat> well, we will see how this works. Not sure. All right. So I've got it all. It has definitely overflowed quite a bit. So I'm not sure how this will work. Excuse me. But we'll give it a try. Oh, I can already see that this is not going to work as well as I thought. <coughs> so, I still got some more resin in this cup, which will allow me to pour just a little bit more. And I could actually just go back and forth with this until I get it all filled up. All right. I think that's the best bet is to try to go for that. Definitely wear gloves. I should have put on gloves, but I didn't. All right, I'm gonna get this pressurized. I'm gonna pressurize it to 40 PSI. That should pop most of the bubbles. And I think that's gonna work just fine. Get everything clamped down securely. I used to use um, pliers to tighten these down, but you really don't need to do that. There's a seal in here that's gonna expand. So whatever air gaps in it, is in there the seal is supposed to expand and help pressurize this so you really don't need to go crazy on these clamps just make sure they're nice and tight before you pressurize it all right let's get this set to 40 psi all right and then for any kind of air leaking from here and from the sides I can feel around and make sure there's no air, no air coming out the sides so you can see I got it right to 40 just above 40 psi I'll check on it um, in a few hours to make sure that it's still pressurized I'm going to leave it overnight and check on it tomorrow. Um, and then I might wait a few days before I actually turn it. All right, that's all for today. Thanks. All right, I didn't get it originally on video, but I wanted to just kind of show you what I did to get this out of here. So it was, there's no way I was going to be able to get this out. It was just very compressed in there so I just use uh, air pressure and this little needle guy and I drilled a hole in the bottom punctured through the mold and then I just applied some air pressure and it just pops it right out just like that I thought that was pretty cool just wanted to show you that's it all right, here we go. Gonna do some turning real quick to clean up the sides. And um, it's gonna be pretty messy. Let's see how it turns out. It's definitely fairly close to being even.
mess. But also kind of fun though too. Okay, so I can already see it seemed to fill up with something real good right there. Um, so let's see here. Yeah, so this filled up with resin real good. Um, yeah, pretty much everything is covered up until here. So I'm going to make this side a little bit narrow so that it can fit back in that uh, container. Um, uh, I couldn't get this resin off of the plastic mold, so I just... Uh, Put it in another container and now it's sitting nice and flat um so i'm gonna go ahead and put this side that needs the resin down into it like this and i've got the diameter is a little bit smaller so i can actually pour the resin in there and not have to worry about pushing resin out of the container so we'll see how that works uh, I need to fill it up approximately halfway, definitely up to here. So I need to fill it this much with resin. <clears throat> so I'm going to mix, go ahead and mix about 50 grams of resin. So 25 of part A and 25 of part B. Ooh. Okay, never mind. It's gonna be 30 grams of each. Got a little carried away there. Alright, I'm gonna try to do this carefully. Just try to get it to 60 grams. Which isn't very much, but I don't think I need very much. And I wasted quite a bit the first time I did this, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and mix that for one minute. I'm gonna start my timer to make sure that I actually I put a little bit too much pigment in there. Um, but it's okay if it's a little darker. It's really just trying to seal up the voids that are left over. So I thought I could pour this straight in, but I, there's really not much room to pour it in. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, there we go. Well, that works really well. All right, so after I get all of this in there, I will check to see how far up the sides it went and kind of move the resin around make sure that it gets all the voids and everything in there and we'll see one thing that i did forget that i hope isn't going to be a problem is that i didn't put in the mold release totally forgot about that so i regret having forgotten that but i will try the same trick i did the first time to get it out and we'll see if that works i'm noticing right here it does not want to stay centered so what i might have to do is try to stick some plastic on the sides to kind of shim it towards the center otherwise it's going to be pretty uneven when it comes out of there but overall things are looking fairly good um, I'm gonna need to clamp it up a little bit um, put some weight on there And I think that will help me keep it centered. So I'll go ahead and put that inside the pressure paint tank. 
put a little bit more weight on top of there and see if we can get this to work. Okay. All right. Well, I'll let it sit for 24 hours inside the pressure tank, pressurized to 40 psi. <laughs> So here's so far where I am with this box project. I've uh, sanded this down all the way. Um, and it's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to be doing is um, this is the inside of the box. I'm still going to drill a hole in the center of this and the center of the lid. And I'm going to try to make it so that when it when the lid slips on it kind of shuffles downward however if you can tell there's a little bit of a curve here so that's not going to work as well so I'll have to reshape this make this straight down but overall I'm pretty happy with how that green epoxy showed up uh, looks pretty good this right here is quite a bit lighter in color, but overall it did fill the gaps fairly well. And this is definitely why I made this the lid and uh, not down here. There's really not much epoxy, not much resin on the bottom. So that's why it's at the top. All right, I'm gonna Put the time lapse back on and work on the inside of the box first and then the inside of the lid after. And I've got little tails on the bottom of the box and the top of the lid to hold on to so that I don't, uh, so that I have something for the jaws of the chuck to grab onto. I'll show you that in the time lapse. <laughs> So the next thing I'm going to tackle is the bottom of the box. The This is all pretty much finished. Um, and the inside is done. Uh, I did keep a little bit of a curve for the inside of the box. We will see if that's going to work or not. But the next part is to work is the, the lid. We need to drill a hole that will fit this top part and then once I got that done and sanded then I'll flip it around finish the top of the box get everything cleaned up and I think it will be done hopefully this won't take too long we'll go ahead and set up a time lapse and we'll see how it goes
Okay, here we go. Here's the finished box. The lid finished. There's the bottom of the box. So it opens up. The inside. I am debating whether to line the inside of both the inside of the box and the inside of the lid with felt. But I really do like seeing the wood on the inside of both. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, overall, turned out pretty well. Lining it with felt is just a pretty quick and easy um, step. So I'll, I'll think that over a little bit. Overall, it took quite a while to get this done, but there's just so many steps that it's kind of hard to avoid. The lid is is a little bit looser than I would have wanted. It was nice and tight. And of course, with all the sanding, it loosened up a little bit. So if I did put line the inside with felt, it'd be a nice, uh, be a nicer fit. So I'll consider doing that. And then if I do, I will do a time lapse of that as well. Okay, so I've got the box here and I'm going to go ahead and clean it up with some alcohol on the inside just to get some of that dust out of there and I'm going to get it ready. I'm going to go ahead and scuff the inside of this up a little bit. I'm going to clean this out. Some alcohol. Alright, now I'm going to get this prepped to line it with some felt. I've got my little Get right here. First I'm gonna tape it up and then put in glue on the inside and glue on the inside of the lid. And I'm gonna be using uh, this type of glue. Um, and this uh, black lining for boxes and stuff. Um, I'm gonna use this thing to evenly disperse this black felt powdery substance. And uh, yeah, it's like a suede fibers is what it's called, suede tex. So. I will do a time lapse of that. So there it is done. Um, just need to clean them up a little bit. And then this will need to sit for about 24 hours while the glue is drying. And um, but yeah, it's a nice um, dark interior uh, that's soft. So if someone who buys this uh, wants to put any kind of delicate jewelry or something like that in there, uh, they don't have to worry about it getting scratched up in there. Um, and now that I've got this uh, lining on the inside of this lid, this should close pretty well. 
we'll see once this glue dries um, and clean it up and then we'll put some final coats of beeswax um, probably do maybe 10 coats just make sure that it's this elm burl soaks it up uh, this elm burl came from uh, a guy up in Goshen and uh, there's lots of cracks and voids perfect for filling with epoxy uh, so I'll get this cleaned up and Let's see, go from there. All right, here is the final box. So this is how it turned out. The lighting is not very good, but... So I did line it with felt on the inside. That is very dark, very hard to see. And I also lined the inside of the lid and it kind of has a nice smooth fit. Um, but yeah, there's the final product. Lots of different steps involved, but I think it came out nice.